Hello everyone, welcome to the show. Today we are doing circle geometry for our grade 12 learners. Um, circle geometry is just like, you know, before we really get into it or understand what is what and when is when. But circle geometry is something that everyone seems to struggle with and I think the reason they, they struggle with it is they don't really know the basics of it, you know, going in. So today we're just going to cover literally just the first thing of it and we're going to not too much detail because I don't want this video to be hours long but just enough for us to get a, a proper foothold foothold is that the right word no, I'm leaving it in. anyway uh, just for us to have a proper understanding of what what's what the sections about but basically we're doing circles right? we were, uh, just shows you <laughs> What, what math is capable of if they're making us study circles. Okay, so term number one, an arc. An arc is a part of the circumference of a circle. So I have the diagram over here to the, to the right hand side. So you see that the arc over here, that can refer to any part of the circumference. So even if I want to highlight this bit over here, that will be an arc, this will be an arc, that will be an arc. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Nothing too complicated about that. So the next la next term, a chord. A chord is a straight line joining the ends of an arc. So well, if you if you didn't know what the word arc means, you would you wouldn't understand what the word chord means, what the term chord means, because a chord is a straight line joining the ends of an arc. And literally, the first term is in the second term. So yeah. So if someone came to you straight and explained chord and you didn't know what arc is, yeah, good luck. But uh, if you look at a diagram, a chord would just be that line over there to that line, that straight line. You see that? Very nice. Very nice. Radius. A radius, normally labeled R, is a straight line from the center of the circle. Very important. Center of the circle to any point in the circumference. So that would be that distance over there from the center, normally labeled O, from O to any point on the circumference. And oh yes, I doubt I shouldn't be say I should be saying this, but circumference is the border of the circle. Got it? Got it? Good. Cool. Uh, diameter. A diameter uh, is a special chord that passes through the center of the circle. A diameter is a straight line. Blah 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 blah. Circumference, circle, blah blah. <laughs> I shouldn't do that, but uh, that's fine. So diameter is um, a straight line that passes through the um, center of the circle. So from that we can tell that you know if a radius is from the center to the circumference, and then the and the diameter is a straight line from circumference to circumference going through the circle, we can determine that two r equals. Well, you can use that symbol. I'm gonna use D for diameter. Probably shouldn't use D, but hey, whatever. Okay, a segment is a part of the circle that is cut off by a chord. A chord divides the circle into two segments, which makes sense because you can see a uh, so a chord is basically cutting up the circle if you want to say it in that way. So that's why it's shaded there. And then this this remaining part is also a segment. But it's a different segment. And if I if I cut the circle down the straight line over here, then this would be another segment, and that would be another segment. But yeah. Okay, and then a tangent. A tangent is a straight line that makes contact with the circle at one point of the circumference. Uh, AB is a tangent to the circle at point P in the figure 9.1. So you see that the cool thing about tangents, well, <laughs> I don't want to use the word cool, you know. The cool thing yeah, about tangents is that it's literally going to touch the circle at one point. So, if you had a straight line that went through the circle like that, that would touch the circumference there and there, they feel you will know that that is not a tangent. Right? So, tangents only touch at one point. Oh, it's not even touching. It's not touching, it's just a line. <laughs> right! Moving on, moving on. Um, 
slight re- revision work, um, just going over the theorem of Pythagoras that everyone knows so well because it's kind of forced into your head into memorizing. I think I, s- I still remember it word for word. It's something like in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. But yeah, just because um, this um, this theorem is going to be very popular in circle geometry. So it goes like this. Um, you have a triangle, there's a right angle. There has to be a right angle. But if you had a other triangle, oh, amazing drawing, that did not have any right angle triangles, you can't use this theorem because it, it wouldn't be valid. Okay, so this theorem is basically saying that if you take the longer side and you square it, and then like that side over there, it's that, that number that you get will be equal to the other two sides, right? You can take, which in this case is BC and AB. If you take the other two sides and you square them individually and you add them together, those two, those remaining values are equal to each other. And yeah, that's it. Cool. Everyone understand? Let's move on. Okay, so what are theorems? A theorem, just like Pythagoras is, right? it's, it's something that's not obvious. Right? When, like, I'm sure thousands, okay, not thousands, many years ago, no, no, no. <laughs> many years ago, someone came and said, hey, look, um, if you look at the diagonal and you square it, it's going to equal to the other two sides. That's not obvious. So that's what theorems are. It's these statements that are not obvious but turn out to be true. So not a lot of the statements that are, we can conclude are not obvious from the beginning. So we'll, we'll take the obvious stuff, mix them together, do a little algebra and a little adding and factorizing, and then bam, we'll get to a end product, which isn't obvious from the beginning. So the first one we're going to be looking at, it says that the line drawn from the center of the circle, okay, center of the circle, which is, we, we store all together, um, perpendicular to a chord, okay, perpendicular, that's a bit tricky, but okay, let's, let's move on there, by six the chord, okay, what does that mean? So, let's, 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 let's work through this line, slowly, and surely. So, if we have a circle, right, right, oh, amazing circle being drawn, and we can say, the line drawn from the circle, from the center of the circle, so this is the center of the circle, perpendicular, a line through, right? so we're going to draw a line. So there should be a chord. Let's draw the chord over here. Right, that's our chord. So we're going to say if a line is drawn from the center to this chord, I will bisect that chord. So what does bisect mean? Bisect means cut in half. Right? That, that's all it means. So let me, let's just draw another circle because I kind of ruined that one already. <laughs> so let's, let's use here. Okay, let's say this is our chord, right? Okay, clearly you can see that this side here, this this uh, line over here, is way longer than this line. Right, they're not equal, right? So that's because this is not perpendicular. So, but if you if you draw it from the center to the chord and it is perpendicular, meaning that this is ninety degrees, then these two lines here are equal. That's all it's saying. And once again, it's a theorem, so it's not kind of obvious, but we're going to have to prove it. So let's go into the proof. Right, okay. So the, the theorem says that a line drawn from the center of the circle perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord. Okay, let's, let's prove that. So when proving, so the aim of our proof is to show that, in this case, that AP equals to A to BP. So that means that this line over here is equal to this line over here. Right? Okay, so let's let's list out what we have. Okay, number one, what do we have? We have a circle. Okay, that's obvious. We're always going to have circles because it's circle geometry. If we didn't have circles, we'd just be doing geometry. But in this case, um, yeah, we have two triangles. The triangles are, let's call this one. Oh no, yeah, AOP. So our first triangle is AOP. Right, and this is a right angle triangle, right? You can notice because there's 90 degrees, and therefore this should also be 90 degrees. 
So that's a that's a right angle triangle. And then we have a second triangle, which is going to be just for so we use the same standard. We're going to call this one POP. Right? So that's our second triangle. So we have two right angle triangles. Both they both right angle triangles. I'm going to use a symbol. Okay. That's number one. Number two. Um, let's see. They both have this line in common. You see that? OP. OP is common in both of them. Right. OP is common. Yes. So what do we mean by OP is common? Common just means that it's shared by both of them. Yeah. So it's that's a line that's in both triangles. And what else do we see? We see that the line OA and OP are radii or radiuses. Radiuses? Radii. So that means that OA and OP are radii. Can use R. Okay, I think I think we we able to list everything that we could see from our diagram. Okay, so let's let's prove that AP is equal to BP. So what we're gonna be doing? We're gonna be using Pythagoras to prove it. So we're gonna say that okay, since we we have two right angle triangles, we can set up a equation for them. So we have that. We take the longer side, so we're going to say that a o squared is equal to um, let's do a color triangle. It's going to be o p squared plus a p plus a p squared, right? And then we're going to do the same thing for our second triangle, which is going to be that o B squared is equal to the other, other two sides, which is, which is again OP. Notice how OP is common in both. And BP squared. Right? Okay, I just I just moved this a bit smaller so I can have more place to write. I don't want to scroll down and then you won't see anything else. Okay, so we established that AO squared. Uh, equals to this over here because of um, Pythagoras and OP squared equals that because of Pythagoras. But remember we set up that OA and OP are, are radii, right? So this is R, this is R. And remember R equals R or in other words o AO equals to OP, right? Or it's the same thing as saying that AO squared equals to BO squared. So that's AO squared, that's BO squared, and that means that this over here is equal to this over here. And therefore we have OP squared plus AP squared is equal to O is equal to OP squared plus plus BP squared. And then notice we have OP squared on both sides, so that cancels. And we're left with A B squared equals to B B squared. And therefore, since we just squared with both sides, we have AP is equal to BP squared. And that was our aim to prove that AP is equal to BP. And then that means that this side equals to that side. And since that side equals to that side, we know that if a line drawn from the center of the circle is perpendicular to the chord, it bisects the chord. Right? Good? Any questions? No? Okay, let's go on. Okay, um, I'm not sure how time is looking, but let's do some quick examples because, hey, this is, this is, <laughs> this is why we do it, eh? So, so we can make sure we not to do it in the exam when we are tested. Okay, so we have a question. Uh, find the value of x. Very easy, very straightforward. If you've been paying attention, you should be able to get it. Okay, so that's our x. We have the value 5 here. OP is given as 5, and we are set at the bottom that PR is equal to 8. Okay, so 
how should we do this we notice that we have a right angle triangle in the center as well so we can use pythagoras and yeah that should be enough <laughs> okay so let's start with our pr and we can say that p q plus q r is in fact equal to p r right <coughs> right everyone understand that? that's from the previous theorems we just did and since this is true and we know that this um these sides are equal to each other so we can label this as 2 pq since we're going to be using pq in the next part of the question is equal to and remember pr is given as to us as 8 and then we divide both sides by 2 so we live with pq is equal to 4. Uh, so we can label this side here as 4 and now we can determine x using Pythagoras. Mm, okay uh, a very important note um, when doing circle geometry is always to give you a reason for your, why you made the statement. See I made the statement at the beginning I said that pq plus pr is equal to pr. So where did I get this from? I, I looked at the diagram but you also have to tell especially the marker just why you wrote this statement so you'll say something like a uh, straight line straight line from center you say something like straight line from center uh, by six uh, good okay so that, that would be my reason you'll get a mark for reason by the way but, yeah um, I don't like this because I know some some schools use different slightly different short ends and I don't want to you know step on anyone's toes so anyway continue second part of the question so now we still have to determine X so we're gonna use Pythagoras so we're gonna say that OP squared is equal to OQ squared plus pq squared and remember we have to give a reason so this would be um theorem of pythagoras right whatever <laughs> okay now we can put some values in op uh is that it's given as five so we can label this as five squared we're just gonna do some substitution it's equal to oq so this is our x this is what we're trying to determine so this is x squared and pq we just determined in our previous question as being four so this becomes four squared okay now we make our x the subject of the formula so it becomes x squared equals to five squared minus four squared so therefore we have x equal to 25 minus 16 square root of that is equal to 25 minus 16 is 9 so square root of 9 is equal to 3 therefore x equal to 3 congratulations good job okay another quick one since uh, it's basically the same question and i don't want to make it too long so we will go with okay um yeah i'm, I'm gonna do this on Real, real fast but it's basically the same thing so we're given that pr is 6 so therefore this is equal because of our theorem so this is equal to 3 and 3 because 6 divided by 2 is 3 and then from here we can see that it's 3 and 4 and then this will be, then x is equal to 5 <laughs> all right come on you guys are with tricks you should be able to see that like instantly but of course you have to show it to your marker so you're gonna you're gonna do this whole same thing again everything here exactly the same besides this is now going to become six this is going to become three and then you'll be substituting in there and then your answer is five you know the same values as of five four and three five four and three okay um that's what i'm gonna call it thank you everyone for watching if you have any questions be sure to drop them in the comments but yeah thanks for watching i appreciate it bye open ups